Ikeogu Oke's looks can be deceptive, but underneath his casual demeanor is a fascinating poetic mind, and his award-winning work, The Heresiad, has been described as powerful, brilliant, and trailblazing. Ikeogu has just won himself about 36 million naira. Now, that's a lot of money. But what exactly is the story behind his current success? He joins us on Channel's Book Club today to explore this story. Enjoy it. Ikogo, thanks for joining us on Channel's Book Club. Thank you for having me. You make me feel very un-African huh? with, with this. Well, you don't have to. <laughs> you need to feel good about yourself. Yeah. It's really nice. Thank this is from you. where? This represents? Ohafia. Ohafia? Yes, in Abia State. Abia State. Yes. So this is a traditional? Well, to an extent, uh, I modified, adapted it to my own preferences. Okay. okay. Well, the, 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 the rapper, the judge rapper, is something we wear very often uh, where I come from. That's Ohafia. The leopard cap. This certainly belongs to them. The zebul, it's the mane of a ram. This? Okay. Yes, yeah. So, well, I made this uh, for my own pleasure. Well, a lot have been said about your poetry, um, and a lot will still be said about your poetry. But I want to focus more on, I mean, I'm sitting with a man who has just won $100,000, you know, for a book he has written. You know, I want to focus more on your personal story. Yeah. Somebody out there is thinking... Hey, lucky man, you know, one book, over 35 million bucks <laughs> in, in, in the bank. But I had you once talk about working on this book for 27 years. Is that, is that correct? Is that, that true? That's very true. What had happened was that I moved to Calabar in 1988 as a, as a pioneer staff of what then was called the Calabar Work Center. And um, I had been writing, I started writing poetry, and I had um, decided that I was going to, you know, I take it on as a vo my vocation. So I conceived the Heresiad the next year. Which was which year was that? 1989. 1989. Yes, and then um, started writing it. In four years, I had a solid manuscript. I had written the entire thing in four years. And then uh, I typed it out at some point, but kept working on it. I would go back, tinker with some lines. See something uh, you want to change, yes. change. And then at some point, things. I actually made some, you know, some very elaborate revisions on it. But you see, uh, over time, I discovered 20 manuscripts of it. 20 different manuscripts? Yes, and I still have 10. You, you, well, you mean drafts? Uh, I don't no, mean manuscripts that drafts. I would think I will find our manuscripts. Okay, but this, you will now I would now write and revise draft. and reprint. You know, I can be finicky, really. I can be, I'm not of a perfectionist. So if I saw a line or two that they didn't seem to agree with, well, you know, with me anymore, I could just reprint the entire thing, changing those two lines, you know. And then you see each of them, most of them I indicated they were final manuscript, but they really weren't. And that went on for 27 years. Yeah, and uh, I still have 10 of those manuscripts in mind. They are still there in mind. Now, but what happened was that after I decided to publish it, I, I was in Lagos for uh, an appointment. I remember specifically where this was because it was to the Limelu Foundation. Uh, somewhere in Ikui. So I am in a taxi driving me to the appointment. And uh, some six lines just said themselves to me. And I happened to have a notepad and a pen with me. So I wrote those six lines back. And then called the publisher who was already working on the, the, on the, on the, and, uh, the manuscript. The manuscript. And said, I have six lines I want to add to this. Form. And he says to me, ah, I'm already done with typesetting, or I'm almost done with typesetting. I don't think that would That's be possible. possible huh? And I began to, you know, uh, plead with him, trying to convince him that, um, that making the alteration was going to be in the interest, not only of the work, but also of, you know, 
with the force. So I convinced him. He said, OK, update it and send me the final manuscript. So after my appointment engagement, I went back to my hotel and then inserted those six lines and renumbered the, the canto in which I inserted them and then sent it back, sent to, it him. back to him. So in other words, I was actually adding more lines up to the last after, after the work had been typeset, as it were, by the publisher in 2016. So if you calculate between 1989 and 2016, you have 27 years. 27 years, years of altering, of yeah, changing all things that, in the manuscript sort of thing. and all that. But in between, you had, you had um, put in entries for the NLNG Prize. Yeah. How many times? Uh, I think this is probably my seventh time. Seven times? Yeah, the one that I won. The one you, was the seventh time. Yeah. So you had six entries Something that had like been that. rejected. Reject, uh, I mean, they yeah, didn't, didn't win. They didn't win. Didn't yeah, win. Yes. Incredible. Six, so those are six different works. Yes, because I, you know, I've been writing poetry. I don't really do this because I want to. It's something I do for the joy of it. It's, uh, even now, I have... I have done, I have about three volumes of poetry. Unpublished? In fact, one was just completed after the, within the, the, this prize. So yes. let, me, let me get, um, that story, that story really, I find it very inspiring. So yeah. you had put in entries six times. About that, yeah, I think six Didn't times. win. Didn't and then win. the seventh one is the one yeah. you had been doing for 27 yeah. years. Yeah. That eventually won. And I wasn't in a hurry because, I mean, if this was really about winning, I could have put this thing along the line. Earlier. Yeah, so because it was never this, about winning yeah, this work was in the works, if you like, while they were running the prize, you know, the, the, the prize was in existence. You know, but you see, I wanted to work it to perfection, if there was anything like perfection, you know. So it's just a coincidence that while I, I thought it was okay, and then there was a call for entry for, for the prize, and I put it in again as my best shot, if you like. And then. What is the most outstanding lesson or impression, maybe about life generally, that struck you when you were announced as the winner of this book I've been writing for so long? I, 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 I came to the conviction which I really had never had as strongly as I do now, that if you have a vision and follow it tenaciously, and um, not listen to what people tell you and worked on it conscientiously and worked hard that somewhere along the line you're going to get the best possible results. Somewhere along your, the line. Yeah, for your efforts. Clear vision. That was all you had for this. Well, I, I think the vision was from the outside, you know. I mean, from the morning that the first lines of this poem came to me, I, you know, I think I, I saw the destination. I, in fact, I wrote the beginning and the end of this poem in two days or mm. three. What do you call the um, epic invocation and the envoy were written in a space of three days. So I knew what the beginning was going to be like. I knew what the end was going to be like. All I needed was to fill, fill the intervening in space with, with a story. Mm. So I knew the destination from the beginning. You know, it was a clear vision that, you know, that uh, it was so clear, so distinct, palpable even. Ikeogu, yeah. um, we have to stop now because of time. Mm. <laughs> but we'll go on and on yeah. about this. But your story is very inspiring. And once again, congrats on the Heresiad and, and your award. Hopefully, we'll get you back here to do some readings I'll for be, us. I'll be very happy to come back. Thank you. Over nice to have over. you on the Channels Book Club. Thank you very much. Amazing, isn't it? If you have a book that you've been talking about writing, I hope Ikeogu's story inspires you to start doing so immediately. This is where we have to stop today. As always, we we'll look forward to getting your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. I'm Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.